Let's play a game. I'm going to say a term, and I want you to think of the first thing that comes to mind. Ready? Climate change. I asked Brown students the same question, and here's some of the answers that they came up with. Disaster, bad, polar bears. Pretty typical responses. But let's do one more, and this time I'll give you a sentence and not a term. What causes climate change? Again, I surveyed the campus, and this time here are some of the answers that they got. Emissions, coal, oil, us. But one stuck out to me above all the rest, and it was persistent no matter how many students I asked. And that was preventable. Now, preventable? How can something as large as climate change, something that's already been set in motion, be preventable? It's already happening. And even if it were preventable, what could you or I as individuals do about that? Or even the 100 people in this room? Climate change is a global issue and we're such a small proportion of that population. Well, that is why today I'm not here to talk about climate change and the individual, but rather the two with one important intermediary, the corporation. Well, what is a corporation? In this sense, we're talking publicly traded companies owned by shareholders, such as you and me, anyone with a 401k plan or anyone that invests their money by other means, and held up by a body of stakeholders, customers, employees, again, you and me. Companies are inextricably tied to our day-to-day -day lives, and thus are subject to our demands and our investments, and yet 100 of the largest companies are responsible for 71% of emissions since the 1980s. That's roughly three quarters of all emissions in the last 40 years tied to 100 companies. That's 100 companies that again are tied to me and you and virtually every corner of this planet. Twenty-five percent, that is how much Facebook stock dropped in one day. Companies are constantly submerged in the issues of the present. What does that mean? Well, it means that 80 percent of CEOs and CFOs are willing to forego R&D spending, and 55 percent of them are willing to put off long-term projects for the sake of meeting quarterly earning report expectations. What does that mean? Again, it means that corporations are tied to shareholder expectations of profits and releasing dividends every three months. Companies are consistently fighting for day-to-day -day competitive advantages, whether it's for their corporate bottom line or their hourly growth margins. In fact, Facebook lost 25% of their overall value in one day when they announced in a quarterly earning report that they were going to be seeing reduced costs and reduced revenues as a result of them trying to tackle their privacy issues and data security. Something I'm sure many of us could argue is a long-term problem and incredibly important in today's age of the internet. That's one quarter of their entire value lost in one day because they tried to solve a long-term problem that was eating away at their corporation. If we penalize companies for trying to search for long-term solutions and sacrificing short-term revenues and profits, how can we ever expect them to care about the environment and climate change? But not only that, climate change has severe implications for the corporation and the overall economy. This takes place in two ways, transition and physical risks. Imagine you were a corporate conglomerate with global operations, and your business relied heavily on consistent shipping of materials and goods from ocean to ocean and country to country. Well, in the next 40 years, we expect sea level rise and an increase in frequency of extreme weather events and hurricanes, something that promises to disrupt operations, increase costs, 
increased prices, decreased stock valuations, and result in a general slowing of the economy. The company, because it's so caught up in the present, may not be able to see this. But we, as patrons of the economy and patrons of the company, can. And through our patronage, we can change the way that these companies shape the future. How do we do that? That seems so daunting of a task. Well, through changing the way we invest. Recently, there's been a surge in what is known as ESG investing, which stands for Environment, Social, and Governance Investing. And behind this surge is an understanding that companies that care about their environment and social impact perform better in the long term. This is the Parnassus Endeavor Fund. It's one of the many funds the Brown Investment Office uses to grow the endowment. And as you can see, over the last 10 years, they've outperformed the market by roughly 3%, something that's incredibly difficult to do in the long term. And how did they do that? Well, by incorporating ESG core to their strategy, in that they invest in companies that take very seriously ESG metrics. Companies, in fact, that care about ESG took a substantially less severe hit in the 2008 financial crisis compared to the rest of the economy and compared to companies that didn't take in ESG. Now, most of us in this room are investors one way or another, whether that's, again, through a 401k or pension plan, through a sort of fintech, or simply through our purchases. But also, we're at an institution in Brown University that sends a large proportion of students to top-tier banks and investment firms, companies that have a larger sway over the corporation. The theme of today's conference is the butterfly effect, which stands for a minute shift in a complex system catalyzing a complex and major systemic change. Well, in this sense, we, the shareholders, and stakeholders are the butterfly as we flap our wings and let companies and our employers invest and act unsustainably. And the tornado? Well, that's climate change. It is up to us as individuals to change our ways, and in effect, we can contribute to a change for a particular problem that seems too big for any single one of us to tackle. Thank you.